Welcome to your fourth tutorial, I believe it is, in XHTML, and boy, do we have a lot to cover. So, uh, let's get started. So, there's one more thing with links I wanted to teach you that we didn't quite have enough time to go through, and that were email links. So, let's create an anchor tag, as we already know how to do that. And within the, the tag, let's type in whatever we want to have appear on the page. So, I'll just use the word email. And then... Uh, for the first attribute in the anchor tag, type in href equals then the quotations. And as you might have noticed, uh, if you've ever uh, hovered over a link on a website, it, do it doesn't just have that email name. It had something before it, but I'll show you that in just a moment. Let's let me use a dummy email. Now, I'm not good at making up names. Um, it, there's something that's supposed to go in front of this and you'll see why in a moment. If we just have the email name uh, let's see what happens. Oh, well, would you look at that. Well, of course the file's not found. Right? Well, what goes in front of the email so the browser knows that it's an email and it will launch, I believe, Microsoft Outlook. Oh, I don't know. Um, is mail to colon this must be in front of the email so what will happen is let me refresh the page I've never done this in Windows 7 I never clicked an email link hopefully Outlook doesn't open oh cool I get the option of keeping it from opening awesome I don't have to wait for it to load that's pretty sweet another reason to love Windows 7 uh, and that about covers it for emails uh, I never use any of these applications, so I never click on these email links on websites, but people have them there. If you're going to have your email on the website, you might as well, because the few people that do use it, they'll thank you, or they'll be happy that it's there. So, um, uh, the next thing I wanted to teach you is, well, maybe you want a little message, also known as a tooltip, to pop up below the email link. So what you can do is um, another property is title equals two quotes and then whatever, whatever you want to have appear when you hover over it. This is a tool tip. Let's try that out. Hey, it works. That's pretty cool. Now we're really getting somewhere with all this. I'm I'm really excited. Um, so that's called our tooltip. That's that is about all with that. Um, the next uh, the next thing I would like to teach you is something I haven't shown you before, which I probably should have, is how to um, um, create a horizontal rule. So I'll just click Enter, and what that is is basically a line that goes across the page. So you could have as many paragraphs as you want preceding it or after it wherever you want to have it, type in HR for horizontal rule, and it's another one of those unique tags where it's just one tag by itself. It's not an opening and closing tag. It's just like that. And when you refresh the page, oh, well, now we got a line that goes across it. It's pretty neat. I, I, actually, I really like these. These are very underused, in my opinion. They're very underrated. And I, think they're, I, think, I think they're nice. Uh, so that's about it for horizontal rules. Uh, next, I would like to teach you ordered and unordered lists. Let's start with unordered lists first. Unordered lists are also known as bulleted lists. So, UL stands for unordered list, forward slash UL, and between this will be your information. Now, I'm going to click tab for um, programming sake so you, you, you can read it easier. And then we're going to add in the list elements. And this is the information that goes within your unordered list. So um, I'll just type in the number one, and then I'll whoops, I'll copy this, and then paste on the next line. Type in two. Save, and then refresh the page. And now we have two bullet points. That's why it's also known as a bulleted list. Um, you can also change the style, so I'll, I'll do that now. You type in style equals 
quote quote list style dash type colon and what shall we use? I'll use a square. Well, that's not how you spell square. Um, is that how you spell square? I'm a computer scientist and I don't know how to spell square. Whoops. I guess not. Oh, I knew that was funky. It's a Q. There we go. And there we go. Now it's now it's a uh, now it's a uh, square. And then others you can use would include disk. That's what disk does. Well, that's pretty much your uh, standard one. But that's enough of that. Other another type of list you can use are called ordered lists, or in other words, numbered lists, and you'll see why. So I'll change this to O. And I'm gonna copy this, or I'll cut it because I want to use it again in a moment. So control X, and then I'll click save, and then there should be numbers. And yep, there's your number. Oh, well, that doesn't really look too nice now since we have a number next to number, but it's pretty clear. Uh, so I'm gonna control paste this again, and again, you can use different list style types, like upper Roman, so that should be Roman numerals. Yep. And you guessed it. Lower Roman. For uh, the lower lower Roman, um, Roman numerals. And you can also um, nest. It's called nesting when you use the same tags within themselves. You can use order lists within these list elements. Like you could type in L like that. And then within the same list element, type in, let's, let's go UL. And then we'll close the UL. And then within these, you can have another list element. So let's try nested element. And as you can see, it's indented, even though it didn't really go on to the next line like I was hoping for. Oh, that's because I don't have something to type there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty awesome that way. You can just nest as many as you want. You can just go out and out and out. Uh, then the last type of list that you can use are called definition lists. Definition lists are DD tags. So allow me to get rid of all of this so we just have the DD tags. And the DD tags represents the start of a definition list. And then within them, you can have the title, then end of title, and then when that within there you can have the actual definition so you can type in I'll just type in def1 one, one refresh the page and there's your first definition um, again excuse me one goes there There we go. Um, so the title, the definition will go here, and then it will automatically indent the definition itself. So you can type in a word here, and then the definition will be indented on the next line. So you have the DT in the closing DT, but before you get into the DDs, you type in your title first. So it looks a little confusing, but yeah. And that will ensure that you know when each title starts and which one ends before you go on to the next definition list. And that's about everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, not even 10 minutes, that's really good. I'll see you at the next video.